So I was playing around with the procedural nodes in Blender, and I stumbled upon this really cool material. And I thought this material would work really well for like some kind of dried fruit, or maybe some crystallized ginger, or some kind of candy. Like if you've ever eaten some dried papaya, or some other dried fruit, or maybe some candied ginger, or crystallized ginger, or maybe some type of candy, I just thought that this would be a really cool material to create a tutorial of. And let me know in the comments if you have some other ideas of what this could be used for. If you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase the procedural material on my Gumroad store, and you also get access to the procedural material if you join my Patreon page. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs. So they're packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. And if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then I have tutorials on how to create all of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. Again, the link is in the description. All right, so real quick, I'm going to show you how I set up my Blender file. So what I did is I added a subdivided icosphere and shaded it smooth. And then I also added a cube and I added this to maybe be like a chunk of dried fruit or maybe some crystallized ginger or something like that. And then I also subdivided this cube and why I subdivided it is because I'm going to be using the displacements in the shade editor. And I would recommend using the cycles render engine for this tutorial because it will look more realistic in cycles and it was designed for cycles. And also if you want to use the displacements then you're going to need to use cycles because Eevee doesn't support the displacements in the shader editor. Now for the lighting I just added this circle here and I filled a face in the circle and I just pointed it at the objects. And then I added an emission material to this circle with a strength of 50 just to give it some nice bright lighting. And and then also to help to get more realistic lighting and reflections, I also added in this Abandoned Hall 01 1K HDR. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com and I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download this. So I just added this into the world as an environment texture to get some nice lighting. And then if you'd like to use the displacements, let me just go over the settings to set that up. So you will need to use the Cycles Render Engine if you want to use the displacement. And then if you want to use the Adaptive Subdivision or the Adaptive of displacement then on the feature set here under the render engine you need to set this to experimental if you want to use the adaptive subdivision all right so now what we need to do is create a material so what I can do is just click on this object right here and then right over here I have the shader editor right here I'm just gonna click on new and then I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to drop this material onto this other cube as well now right over here if you go over to the material properties and scroll down we need to tell this material to use the displacement just open up the settings tab and then you're going to open up the surface and then right here you can see it says displacement and I want to change this to displacement and bump and that way we're telling the material to use the displacement and then if you'd like to use the adaptive subdivision then you can click right over here on the modifier properties and you can click on add modifier and then right down here you can add the subdivision surface under generate and then if you have the feature set set to experimental then you can click on the adaptive subdivision just check mark that right there and then I I will just set the dicing scale to five. And I'm gonna do that for this object as well. So I will click on the cube. Let's click on add modifier and I'm going to add the subdivision surface. And then I will check mark the adaptive subdivision. You don't have to use the adaptive subdivision if you don't want to. You could just subdivide the object a lot so that it has lots of detail to be displaced. But I do like using the adaptive subdivision. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have that enabled, you can just click on edit and then you can open up the preferences and then over there in the add-ons tab you can just search for the node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on all right let's create the procedural material now so i'm going to press shift a i'm going to go to the search here and i'm going to add the voronoi texture so let's just click on the voronoi and i'm going to drop it down here and then using the feature from the node wrangler you can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes and that's going to add the viewer node and so it's going to preview the material on these objects and then just make sure you have the Voronoi texture selected and I'm going to press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes but then I don't need the mapping node because the mapping node is going to be used to change the location and rotation and scale of the texture but I don't need to transform the texture so I can click on the mapping and press X to delete it and then let's just use the object coordinates so I'm going to take the object and put that into the vector of the Voronoi texture. Now on the Voronoi texture here I'm going to click on the 
the F1 and I'm going to change it to Smooth F1. So the difference between F1 and Smooth F1 are pretty much the same, but when you have the Smooth F1, you can change the smoothness value. So F1 doesn't have that smoothness value, but if you change it to Smooth F1, now you have the smoothness value. So you can turn this from zero all the way up to one. And so that is gonna change the smoothness of the texture. And I'm gonna change the smoothness value to like a 0.35, so a 0.35. And then I'm also gonna turn the scale down to like a three. So I wanna use this Voronoi texture to give a little bump to the material. So what I actually wanna do is use the color in the bump. So if you control shift and select the Voronoi texture again, you can see that we now have the color value and we're previewing the color value. So I wanna use this in the normal to give it some bump. So I'm gonna take the color and let's put the color into the normal, but then I need to convert this color data into normal data. You can see the color data is yellow, but then the normal data is purple. So we need a node in here to convert it to normal data. So I'm gonna press shift A. I'm gonna to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a bump node. So let's click on the bump node and I'm gonna drop it right down here. So the color is actually gonna go into the height value of the bump. So then to preview that, I can control shift and select the principal BSDF. And you can see now the material has all those little bumps there. Now the material is white right now and so I wanna give this some color. So let's go right over here to the base color on the principal and I'm gonna click right here on the color and I'm gonna make it kind of a dark reddish orangish color. Actually not super dark, but kind of saturated in a little bit dark. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then you can go over to the hex value and you can type in a hex value of A6. 3312. So that is the color that I'll be using. All right, now you can see that this is mostly very, very smooth, and so I want to make it a bit more rough and bumpy. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search here, and I'm going to search for a, a noise texture. So let's drop the noise texture right down here under the Voronoi, and then I can Control Shift and select the noise texture so we can preview what it looks like. And also, I do want to use the object coordinates on this texture as well. So let's take the object, and we're going to plug that into the vector. And then on the scale here on the noise texture I'm just going to turn this to like a 2.5 so it's a bit smaller and then I do want it to be very detailed so let's turn the detail level all the way up to the max which is 15. So I also want this noise texture to go through the bump to make it look bumpy. So to do this I'm going to click on this bump node and then I'm going to press shift D. Shift D will duplicate the node and I'm going to drop it right in here after this bump node. So the normal can just go through the normal on the bump node but we now have this extra height value that we can add data into to give it more bump. So I'm going to take the factor from the noise texture and I'm going to put that into the height right there. And then let's control shift and select the principal BSDF to preview it. And I also need to bring the material output over here. So now you can see that this material is very, very bumpy. Now this is a bit too bumpy. So I'm going to take the strength value and I'm going to turn that down to like a 0.4. And also on this bump as well, the first one, I'm going to turn that down to like a 0.4. So it's not quite as bumpy and that is looking much better. Now you can see that this is a very strong kind of orangey color and I want it to be a bit more yellowish and a bit more light and I also want a little bit of light to be going through this material kind of like with a piece of candied ginger or something there is just a little bit of light going through the object it's just a little bit transparent or a little bit translucent so to get this effect I'm going to be adding some subsurface scattering so right here on the subsurface you can turn up the subsurface and now you can see that it's looking more smooth and soft and it's allowing more light to go through so I I'm going to turn the subsurface value to a 0.2. Now right here, if I just like click and drag to make this principal shader bigger, you can see it says subsurface color. So we can either put in some sort of texture or we can just change the color right here. So I'm going to click on the subsurface color and I'm going to make it kind of a yellowish orangey color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of FF. 9D59. So now you can see this is really starting to look like some sort of candy or ginger or dried fruit. Now I also want to play around with the roughness, so you could just turn the roughness value up and down, but I instead want the Voronoi texture to affect the roughness. And that way some parts will be a little bit more rough and some parts will be a little bit more shiny. So I'm gonna take the distance from the Voronoi and I'm going to plug that into the roughness. Now I want a little bit more control over this, so I'm gonna press Shift A. 
Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and let's just drop the color ramp node right here. So now we can change these colors and that is going to affect how rough and shiny it is. So if I click on this black tab, if I start to turn it up, you can see that when it is more light, it is more rough. You can now see that this material looks super, super rough. But if I take this color and make it very dark, it's going to be more shiny. So I do want this material to be pretty shiny, but not too shiny. So I'm just going to make this kind of a gray color. Just something like that is pretty good. All right. So this this material is looking pretty cool but it still doesn't have any displacement and so I want to give it some displacement now so what I'm going to do is actually join these two textures together and then we will use that to actually displace the mesh so to join these two textures together I'm gonna to press shift a and let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a mix RGB so let's just drop the mix RGB right down here so the mix RGB is going to mix different colors together so RGB stands for red green and blue so we can basically just use this node to mix textures or colors together. So I'm going to take this color from the Voronoi texture and I'm going to put that into color 2 on the mix. And then to preview what it's looking like, you can hold down the control and shift key and then select the mix to preview it. And then let's take the factor value from the noise texture and let's plug that into color 1. And then right here on the mix, I'm going to click on this and I actually want to change it to add. And then I'm just going to leave the factor at 0.5. You could play around with this. I'm going to leave the factor just in the middle at 0.5. So now if you zoom in here, you can see there's some noise right there. There's a little bit of noise here and there, but then you can also see those little bumps there from the Voronoi texture. So I'm now going to use this texture to actually displace the mesh. So what we need to do is we need to put this data into the displacement. So I can take the color and I can put that into the displacement. Now there is a problem with this. This is color data. You can see it is a yellow dot, but then this displacement right here, this needs to be displacement data. You can see it is a purple dot. So this is yellow and this is purple. So just like we converted this color data into normal data, we need to convert this color data into displacement data so it can actually use the displacement properly. So to do this, we're going to press Shift A. We're going to go to the search here and we're going to search for the displacement node. So let's click on the displacement node and then you can actually just find the wire. So this wire right here, you can just drop it right there and it's going to connect it up. And then let's just drag the displacement right down here underneath the principle. So now the color from the add is actually going to go into the height value on the displacement. And so this displacement node is going to convert this data into displacement data. And then that can go into the displacement on the material output. So let's now control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview it. Now that is way too strong. That is very, very strong. So on the scale here, let's just turn this down. So I'm going to turn this down to just like a 0.25, just a 0.25 and that'll make it much less strong. That is a lot better. Now this cube right here is already very close to the shape that I want. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate this material and then just make the displacement much less strong. So what I'm going to do is click on this little icon here and it kind of looks like two pieces of paper and that is going to duplicate the material but it's gonna keep the same information. So just make sure you have the cube selected and then on the displacement here on the scale, I'm just gonna turn this down to like a 0.1 so it's much less strong. So now you can see if I zoom in there, you can see it is kind of bumpy here and there, but it mostly resembles the shape of a cube. And that is it. So that is the finished procedural material. So I'll just give this a final render now. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase the procedural material on my Gumroad store and my patrons on my Patreon page also get access to my procedural materials. And you can also check out my blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials and to learn how to create all of my procedural materials you can check out my blender procedural material playlist on youtube all the links are in the description but i hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching